Hi everyone, it's Christine here from Ever After Paper Crafts and yesterday I posted a video sharing how I made the background of this particular card. Um, I showed how to make the waves and the clouds, you know, sky background um, using distress inks and distress oxide inks and today I thought we'd go ahead and color this mermaid together um, and I'll show you how I painted her with my zig markers and my water brush. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, the stamp set that I used is from Honeybee Stamps. It's a brand new release and it's called Mermaid Song. It's a fabulous stamp set. I definitely encourage you to check out all of the new mermaid sets from Honeybee Stamps. They're really quite lovely. I will call out the, um, the zig markers that I use as we go along, but I really didn't use very many at all. It's amazing how you can get this really pretty shaded effect with just a few markers. So let's go ahead and get started. I went ahead and already stamped the mermaid image onto some Canson XL watercolor paper using some Hero Arts black dye ink. This is my favorite ink for any type of water coloring. It dries incredibly fast so you don't have to wait. You can just start coloring immediately and it um, doesn't bleed at all. So it's great, great, great ink. All right, so let me go ahead and zoom in here so you can see the coloring and I will get started. All right, what I'm going to do is, like I said, I will call out the colors as we go along. I'm using my water brush here, which is just my Zig water brush that I use all the time when I'm doing the painting here with my Zig markers. And I will call out the, uh, the Zig marker colors as we go along. I'm going to start with her hair. So um, for that, I used brown and light brown. I always start with your darkest color. So in this case, I'm starting with the brown and I'm going to work in sections. So I'm going to start over here in this small section right here. It's certainly going to be darkest by her part here and then over here around her ear as we come up onto um, around her face. If you look at her this way for a moment, she's facing to the right. So I'm imagining that the sun or the light source is coming in here from the right. So certainly it's going to be light and highlighted right, um, right here uh, in the kind of the middle of this section of hair. So we've scribbled our brown down, as you can see, just a little tiny bit of brown. Now I'm going to come in with the light brown and in a circular motion, pull this brown color out and up into the white section that remains and then we take our water brush and fill in the remainder of the white space and there you can see you have a beautiful highlighted look for her hair isn't that pretty it's kind of like a um, a blonde like a dirty blonde almost it's just beautiful now there's a tiny little bit of hair um, let's see down here right behind the shell that she's holding so we're going to put a little bit of brown there a little bit of light brown and then we'll just fill this in just with our water brush here. This is such a tiny space that you're not going to see much highlighting on it, but that's okay because you're, you really can't. You can only do so much with such, with such a small space. Now let's move over here to the left side of her face here. She has kind of this little poofy part of her hair, kind of almost like a side bang or something. Um, so let's go behind that first and do this part of hair back here. And so I'm going to scribble some brown down and it's certainly going to be darkest by her part over here on the right side as well. So I'm going to leave kind of the middle section there as where um, it's going to have the highlight from the light source. I'm going to pull this brown color out with the light with the with the light brown marker here. And then I'm going to take the water brush and fill it in. There we go. Lovely, lovely so beautiful love this combination like I've said it's a great hair combo now we're gonna do the bang part of her hair and so it's certainly by her ear down here going to be dark as we come up around her face and then over here of course by the part I mean yes I'm sorry by the part is going to be dark as well so I'm putting my brown there and as you can see there's no magic to how I lay the color down from the marker I just kind of throw it on there um, honestly it's 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 really really easy to do this and now with the light brown I'm just pulling the brown marker out and blending those two colors together and now I'm going to take my water brush to fill in the remainder of this white space that's left behind and as you can see we have a beautiful beautiful blended color there isn't that pretty so now we'd have to do this large chunk of hair here so what I did for that 
is I took my brown and I feel, of course, it's going to be darkest here. This poofy bang, what I'm calling a bang for lack of a better word, is kind of sitting on top of it. So it's certainly going to shade the top portion of this chunk of hair. It's also going to be darkest around her face here and around her body. So I'm just scribbling down some brown here. And then down here by uh, where the hair meets the little ribbon or hair, hair band, it's going to be dark down there as well. Um, so let's just finish scribbling this, this brown down here like so. Okay, there we go. And as you can see, I've literally just scribbled this brown on. There's no special way to put the marker on the paper or anything like that. You're just scribbling it down. Now I'm taking my light brown marker and in a circular motion, I'm blending it with the brown and pulling it into the white space that's left behind here. But of course, not all the way because our water brush, we want to leave a lot of space for our water brush to create that third lightest color for us. The water brush is taking the mixing of the brown and light brown and turning it almost into a third color um, when, when it reacts to that water, which we'll use to fill in the remainder of the space, um, and it creates that beautiful highlight. Isn't that gorgeous, guys? I just love how these big markers work. I get so excited. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a nerd. I can't help it. All right, so now we just have to do the rest of the hair here that, that comes after the ribbon, so kind of the ponytail part, I guess you could say. And so uh, to the right, of course, it's going to be the darkest. So I'm just scribbling down some brown. And now I'm going to take some light brown and blend it with that brown, pull it into the white space. And then, of course, take my water brush here to fill in the remainder of the little ponytail. All right, and we are now done with her hair. Beautiful. All right, let's go ahead and do her shirt next. For the shirt, I used violet and light violet. And again, we always start with our darkest colors, so I'm going to start with the violet. And to the left of her shirt is certainly going to be darkest because, again, I have that light source coming in from the right. So I'm scribbling down just a line of the violet along, along whoops, thought I'm going into her belly. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. All I'm doing now to fix that mistake is taking a clean water brush. I've just scribbled off so no color comes off of it. And as you can see, I have completely taken that purple away from her skin, um, which I think is really awesome. This, these markers are very forgiving, so if you make a mistake like that and you're just coloring along and realize, oops, I colored skin or I colored her hair or whatever, um, you can erase it. Um, it's really cool. So anyway, now I'm going to scribble um, some of this purple down um, kind of underneath her arm where there's going to be some shading as well. And kind of above her arm, there's going to be a little bit of shading as well from that shell. Now I'm going to come in with the light violet and just sort of pull this color, blend these two colors together and uh, pull, the, pull it a little bit into the white space here. Go a little bit down into the shoulder or the arm rather of the shirt and just pull this down. And now we'll use our water brush to pull these colors out into the empty space that remains, the white space that remains. Getting a nice kind of third color there in the middle to really show some nice highlighting on this shirt. And that is exactly what we're looking for. Okay, her shirt's done. Let's go ahead and do the shell now. And I hope that this will show up on camera. I used light pink for the shell. And this is a very light color, but it does show up in person. It's just, I've noticed watching some of my videos back, it can be um, difficult to see on camera. So hopefully you guys can see it. I'm just kind of doing the shadow, um, of course, on the inside of the shell of the opening, as well as the bottom of it. The light's going to be hitting the top of it for certain. So kind of around her hand and along the bottom is where it's going to be darkest. And now I'm just going to take my water brush here and simply pull that color up into the white space that's left behind. And we have really pretty shading on this shell now. Hopefully you guys can see that. Like I said, that light pink is kind of light, but hopefully you can see the shading on that. All right, now I want to do her tail. I used one color for her tail, which is turquoise green. Again, we have that light source coming in this way. So the left side here of her tail is certainly going to be darkest. I'm going, so I'm going to scribble my darkest color, I mean my marker rather, which is going to be where it's going to be darkest along this left side here of her tail. This is a pretty big space to color. 
So I'm putting down quite a bit of marker. Usually I only put a little line of marker, but because this is such a bigger space, I wanna make sure I have enough marker to pull across into the white space that remains. So as you can see, I put a much larger line of color down from the marker than I normally do. Now I'm just going to pull this out with my water brush and into the remainder of the white space that we've left behind. And this is what's going to create our shadow. Lovely, very pretty. So there you can see the shading that we've gotten. And you can go over this again and darken that shading if you want to. That's the great thing about zigs is you can go right back over what you've already colored to darken it up even more. So if you want that darker part to be even darker, no problem. Just color over what you already, what you just did again with your marker, pull it out with your water brush and it will darken even more for you. For purposes of the video, I'm not going to do that today just to try to move this along here, but you can do that quite easily if you want to. Now for the rocks, um, I am going to be using two colors. I'm going to be using gray and light gray. Now it's certainly going to be darkest um, by her under or up against, I guess you would say, her tail here. So I'm going to put some the gray right up against her body here, where her little mermaid tail is, and around the bottom, and then kind of here around the bottom is going to be darkest as well, and then behind this little rock that's jutting out in front of this big one. All right, so there's our gray. Now we're gonna come in with our light gray and pull some of this color out and just blend it in a circular motion and pull it out into this open space here. And you can see these colors really blend well together. The, the gray and light gray, they work really well together and blend quite lovely. And now we'll take our water brush and fill in the remainder of the white space that's left behind and we'll have a beautifully blended rock. Hopefully that, hopefully this is all making sense. I'm hoping that <laughs> I have it zoomed in enough and all of that so you can kind of see what I'm doing as we go along here. And I'm trying to explain it with words as well. I'm not always the greatest at that. So hopefully the combination of me trying to explain it as well as being able to view what I'm doing will really help um, you guys see how I do this. Now, I'm not in any way claiming to be an expert with these zigs. I certainly don't work for zig, although that would be pretty cool. <laughs> Um, you know, I'm just a crafter and I have discovered that for, for me, these markers are wonderful and I'm just sharing with you guys how I personally use them and because I, I'm, you know, I'm pleased with the results that I get. And so hopefully you guys like it too and want to learn how to use these and, uh, and, uh, are enjoying my videos and the tips. At least that's my goal. All right. So I've put some more, um, gray down here again, close to her body where it's going to be darkest. And now I'm coming in with the light gray to just blend these colors together. And then I'm going to mix it all together and fill in the remainder of the white space with my water brush. All right, one more little tiny rock left to do. Coming in with the gray, mixing to them together with the light gray. And then, of course, blending it all out with the water brush. All right, and there you have it. There you have your beautiful rocks. Now, let me bring over the original card for a moment. As you can see here, there's also um, the, the image has sand down here and water. I cut mine out because I put her in waves already. So I'm not going to color that today. I'm just going to color the, the skin tone and we'll be done with the mermaid. To show you how to do skin tone now, I use two colors. I use blush and flesh color. The blush is the darker of the two, so we'll start with that. So let me bring this down so I'm on camera. All right, so for the blush, we're going to put it around her face. It's certainly going to be darkest on the left side of her face and, of course, underneath that um, shell. So now we're going to take the flesh color and sort of blend this blush out a little bit into the white space. Blend the ear, okay. And now we'll take the water brush and pull this all up into the white space that's left behind. Don't forget to 
can't get her ear over here either. Okay, it's very subtle in real life. So usually when I'm working with watercolor paper, it's thicker paper. So I will often with light, light, light markers like the skin tone, I'll go over it one more time. So let me show you how I do that. And literally, when I say go over it again, I mean literally repeat what you just did. Um, it's, it's that simple. So I put the blush down. Now I'm coming in with a flesh color again, pulling it up to blend it all together here, and then taking the water brush and pulling it in the middle. And now it's probably showing up even better on camera. In real life, it's even more pronounced shading. So hopefully you guys can see that as well. I'm going to do the same thing now with the skin underneath her neck, coming in with the blush, coming in with the flesh color, and now blending it out with um, my water brush here. And then we'll do the same with her arms. Again, with the blush just down here. The tops of her arms are going to be lightest. So we'll act accordingly there and put the blush on the bottom. Take the flesh color, kind of move that up a little bit. Move the blush up a little bit and blend it. The arms are so tiny, you're really not going to see um, extreme, you know, blending and highlights and shadows on the arms, and that's okay. When you're talking such small spaces, don't, you know, don't get upset if you don't really see the shading. Um, it's absolutely okay because you can only do so much in those small, tiny spaces. So don't worry about it. Some parts might not have shading, and that's absolutely okay. Now I'm just doing her belly here. And we'll take that water brush and fill that in. I'm gonna go over the belly one more time because again, this is thicker paper and sometimes these lighter markers just need a second go around to really show up and to see that highlighting. I'm not gonna worry about doing it on her arms though because again, they are so small um, that it's probably not gonna show up very well anyway. Now finally for her cheek, this, the right cheek is covered with the shell, but I do wanna put a little bit of blush on um, the left cheek here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of almond pink down in a circular motion right on top and then I'm going to take my water brush and just follow over what I just did. Just take my water brush and go over the exact shape I just made just to blend it in slightly so it's not so bright pink on her cheek. Finally, um, I wanted to do a little bit with this hair ribbon over here so I'm just going to take the light violet and um, just do a little bit on the ribbon and then a little tiny bit on the flower that's coming up out of the ribbon. And uh, and then just a little bit of greenery on the little, what I imagine to be seaweed. So I'm just gonna take green for these and I'm just going to color them. I'm not gonna bother with the water brush because again, this, this space right here is so incredibly small that you're not gonna see any highlights or shading on it. So no need to, to do that extra step with the water brush. Just go ahead and uh, color it in if you want. Um, make your life a little bit easier. Not everything has to be painted. Some of it can just be colored in like you would color normally with a marker or something. All right, guys, so there is our mermaid. You can see with just coloring super quickly how I was able to get really pretty results um, with just a few markers, and, um, and I even did it very quickly. So um, I hope that this encourages you to pick up some Zig markers and give these a try. I will have a list of all the markers that I used on my blog, um, and I'll have a link to my blog down below in the description box of this video. But I really hope that this was helpful, and I hope that you won't shy away from watercolor more complex images because with the markers and a nice water brush like this one that has a very fine tip on it um, you really can't get into these small spaces and you can watercolor like a pro um, and you don't have to worry about it being so unpredictable or the water you know kind of getting getting out of the lines or anything like that because as you saw I got purple on her belly <laughs> and I was able to just erase it with the clean water brush so they're very forgiving and um, I really hope that you guys will give this a try because the results are beautiful thanks so much guys as always for stopping by i really really hope that you enjoyed this video your support is wonderful i appreciate it so much and i'll catch you in the next video thanks guys bye bye